All right. So was that some kind of fun today or what? I really enjoyed checking in, going through all those presentations and uh, being able to actually uh, sit back and enjoy what was happening today. We will give just a few more minutes and let some others get on board and uh, make sure we have everybody that's wanting to be here here. Thank you all for your comments. Let's see here. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we got some that are on with the hair analysis. Anybody that wants to shout out and say where you're from, that's always really fun. We get an idea of what our um, disbursement magnitude is across the, the globe. So that's already already a lot of fun to see where everybody's coming from. Our plan for today is going to be, I'll do a little recap. Um, I hope you all were taking some notes because I certainly took some notes today. Uh, so I'll do a little recap on each of the different presenters. And uh, so we got Florida checking in. Um, so once I do the little recap, then we'll open it up to the, the Q&A. And the questions that we go through then will be about the specific uh, programs that were presented today in our summit. So we got Maryland outside of Washington, D.C. Hello, Lisa. The other thing, too, I wanted to remind everybody that you can still invite friends. So on your morning um, email, login email, there's a spot down there where you can actually invite others. So it's not too late to share if you've been having fun with the the Senior Dog Care Summit and you want to invite some of your other friends, let them know that you care about them and, and their dog's welfare, that you can send them an invite still and then they can join tomorrow. So that'll add some more fun. We got California here. Oh, but a New Yorker through and through. So let's see here. Does that mean you're for the Mets? <laughs> Baseball season. Uh, England's checking in. Awesome. And a New Jersey. We've got a lot of different time zones here. Somerset, oh gosh, Drizzly, Newcastle, Australia. Back home in Missouri, I heard they had some snow today. I'm in Arizona, so it's sunny. But uh, yes, more snow for Missouri. New Jersey. Dallas, Texas. Awesome. All righty. So we're getting in a few minutes here. Uh, I think Yankees and the Mets. All right. Oh, a dog fan more than baseball. I get that. Totally fit. That's why you're here. Maryland on the Eastern Shore. All righty. Well, if everybody here is good to go, like I said, uh, I was taking some notes today. And so we'll start off our first program today was with Dr. Doug. And we were talking about turmeric and using curcumin, turmeric, and uh, providing that in a powder form that can be administered also in chewables. We're looking at turmeric itself, the rhizome. So not a root per se, but the rhizome and the fact that turmeric is effective against so many cytokines, that there are many cytokines in the body and cytokines are those entities that create inflammation. And that's one of the things that turmeric is awesome for is being able to cut through that cytokine cascade and help them to bring back that inflammatory process. So the inflammation is any of the itises that are out there. So you've got uh, Dr. Doug's contact and you can go learn more about that uh, turmeric life. And then Dr. Chris was our second program. And it was really cool how, because uh, today's topic was what goes in the body. And I thought it was really neat as they laid out and you, you were, went through each of them that um, it built on another one that the different presenters didn't really know exactly what the next person was talking about, but how well each of the programs kind of intermingled to each other 
and and start up starts to build the base that you have more to to remember help you remember uh, how these things all fit in so uh chris's program was about antioxidants and she was really helping look at longevity and the bio the flavonoids that are in antioxidants and how that helps the body to be able to age better yeah um, she talked about nutrition abuse, which is kind of what happens in the current society with the processed foods, uh, eating in the drive ups. And uh, so it happens on the human side and, and the animal side as well. And um, let's see here. We, she also talked about the chronic diseases and how those that processing of foods leads to that. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed her different stories of the cultures. Um, I like the one in Sardinia because we had the goats, that little part about the goats that ate the plants that were high in curcumins, and then how the people then that either drank the milk or ate the goat meat, then they were benefiting from that. So you start to see that we are what we eat and what goes into them then goes into us and our dogs and makes a big difference that way. So we want to keep those antioxidants, especially uh, the fresh foods, those the red plants uh, where the quercetin is, the red skin of the apples, the strawberries. We want to keep those free radicals down. All righty. So moving on then, uh, Katie. So Dr. Katie came on with her five pillars of optimal health. And she really helped focus on the gut health and the microbiome helping to put all the puzzle pieces together there. She offered a cleanup plan that also then in the end had about replacements, what you can do. Uh, she also reiterated about how important it is that we don't reduce protein just because the body's old, that doesn't equal reduce protein. That the older bodies actually, for many of them need a better, higher quality level of protein to help them be able to maintain muscle mass. Because as we get older, and the endocrine system wears out, we start losing that muscle tone and we used to look beefy and now not so beefy. So, so that happens with the animals too. And then it becomes more difficult for the body to move the bones around when the muscles don't have the, the consistency there. Uh, dental disease was another point that she brought up, making sure that, you know, where we start in the mouths, that we're not feeding bacteria and more inflammation into the body. Also, we look at digestion. You go from the mouth to the stomach, the problem with acid reflux and um, that, that animals can have that too. And that in our dogs to not jump right away onto those antacids because they can lead to other problems. Then getting down into the gut, the microbiome, wanting to keep that healthy microflora there and connecting the gut with the endocrine system, which is going to then affect cognitive. It's about the gut mind connection. So she brought a little bit of that back into the program and then talked about diet toxins that are in there and also about stress, which the stress point came up also in Dr. Chris's. Uh, it's come up in every program as well. We move into Dr. Will was our next presenter today, and his program was about thinking outside the box. It's about realizing that all dogs don't die of infectious diseases. So all dogs don't need that constant immune challenge by being vaccinated again and again and again and again. That there's an immune alertness that exists in the body, the cell mediated response, and while a titer may go from being higher to being lower, that's just the body taking a rest. And if the body was challenged, if that individual had to respond to one of those infectious diseases, then that immune system, that uh, cell mediated immunity would jump right in and it would be able to respond and make those antibodies to protect. With Will, we also talked about cancer and uh, his point there was that to reduce cancer really starts when they're young and getting them on a good diet, uh, doing the raw diet as much as possible, uh, the prey type diet, which is what their ancestors would have eaten, which is what their computer knows about. He too talked about the microbiome and his perspective is about, as he talks about uh, walking in the woods, uh, getting out in the grass, places where it's 
healthy, not where it's been sprayed with glyphosate for sure, but farms, wild places where you're away from the city smog that might be on it, uh, allowing the dog to roll in some plants and walk in the dirt and be able to pick up other things in a healthy way that then reestablish a better microbiome that getting the gut going and getting the bigger friends and family plan that we our dogs don't have to be sterile and that's not going to be healthy in the long run let's see here he talked a little bit about antibiotics that uh, don't necessarily jump on that right away if you have a culture and sensitivity and you know that this is something that you need but not just to assume that that's the answer for everything because the microbiome does take a hit when you're giving antibiotics all the time he had a couple of voids certainly toxins and, and vaccines as much as you can do that uh, on his to-do list again was the dental keeping the teeth and that mouth, keeping the infection down, the gingivitis out of there. Then we moved into cancer. We talked about gearing up the immune system so that it actually can continue to identify the cells that are you from the cells that went awry and keeping that enemy out of there. We also discussed some about transfer factor and how that's in the white cells and it can be augmented by administering mushrooms, but you actually can give transfer factor to help with the, with the bodies. So a uh, little bit about um, how homeopathy works, trying to get just that right homeopathic preparation. So an introduction to homeopathy there. Then we had Dr. Zach. He came on with uh, sharing his information about CBD and he broke the program down into three parts. So there was the foundation and then the different conditions that CBD can help with that fit to our a senior dog care program and then dosing and administrations. So to help with the foundation, he talked about the receptors in the body that are the endocannabinoid system. So the body already has a system set up within the endocrine system to look at and, and see these, these cannabinoids and allow them to help the body. So those phytocannabinoids are the ones in the plants. And then when they're administered, um, as a biological molecule, we get the effect of the THC, which is therapeutic. So we can help with pain and seizures and improve appetite and digestion and the immune response, uh, also with the cognitive conditions. I also talked about um, the, the difference between marijuana and hemp talked about the diverse array. So what you want in your products, if you're using CBD, is to make sure that you have the full spectrum. It gave us a walkthrough on the different types of products that are manufacturers that people are bottling and that you can actually get a product that doesn't really work. So you may think that CBD isn't effective for your dog and it may just be the product that you'd picked. There are certainly safety standards uh, there's more and more research coming out about the use of CBD. Uh, there is no lethal dose. LD50 means lethal dose uh, in dogs for THC. So it's good with pain, uh, inflammation, gut, and cognitive dysfunction. Uh, let's see here. He also talked about the certificate of analysis and the labeling. The other thing that I thought was really interesting is that you could have, a, it doesn't necessarily go by weight, that you could have a smaller dog that is less sensitive to it. So actually needs more per pound, more the milligrams per dose, more drops, whatever, how you're administering it. Uh, and then you could have a larger dog that is more sensitive that may actually require less of the CBD than what the smaller dog did. So, so keep that in mind, because I think that's very, very important. And that also the best route is to drop it in the mouth that, that it is effective if it's in a chew and you get it that way and that's how it's given but it's best to be able to be absorbed from the mouth so that's like a homeopathic preparation they're the same as that all right and then our next was jason donis and uh, this program was very special because he like you a pet parent who saw a need to make a change in the interest industry so he talked about lifestyle transitions and uh, encouraging you to do the research so that you own the knowledge. If there's something that's taking place in your dog to set aside time to really learn about it, 
because um, the veterinary profession and, and traditional veterinary practice, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to focus on. And that, that practice of study is about medicinals. It's about medicine, prescription, surgeries, diagnosing, but it's that doctor in that training may not necessarily have the, the ability to share other information with you because they're not aware of it. They've not studied it. So re-engaging, he has uh, some steps that he took uh, in order for him to reach his goal. And one was to find the right team, to uh, find a team that works well. And he has Dr. Will and Scott that he's worked with. Um, their, their other focal point, another one of their key points was that they wanted human quality ingredients. So, so not only human quality, which normally is going to be on the label, but also learning to read the labels and uh, not having the synthetics in there, um, watching out for things like flavorings, natural flavors are not really natural at all. Uh, he has the products that have about transfer factor, which transfer factor itself is 80 times greater than the anti-inflammatory effect of colostrum. And then also looking at being able to detox. And he has the product that has the um, zeolite in it. And he calls it uh, sacred geometry. So that has to do with what's really in nature and maintaining that matrix of zeolite as far as a good uh, detox and uh, something to help move out all those toxins in the body. So this is kind of a breakdown of what we had today. Oh, some of the other points that he talked about, uh, the drinking in the food bowls. He wanted to give a little tip, making sure that you're not using plastic or things from China. Uh, he also talked about re-engaging pet parents, look at it from a spiritual, the the uh, physical and also the emotional perspectives. And a point that he had was to not deliver pity, to not give pity to the older dogs, but to keep them engaged and keep try to keep their life going along as much as you can, uh, even if the walks are shorter, but to still do the things that you've always done. And so that when you get to the end that whatever their purpose was for being with you, whether it was as a spiritual guide or to help you learn something about some disease condition. I think so many times an animal comes in and we start working on their disease problem and really their disease is something that the family has, a child has, a relative, a friend, and it's they're, they're taking it on to help them learn or help them prevent it in themselves down the road. So he said to love them back and uh, make sure that you make a bucket list as they get older and to start doing your check off on your bucket list so that when you get to the end that you've accomplished all of that. So I think we had some really, really good points come out of the program today. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow's program, which tomorrow is preventing injury and reducing pain. So all of the focus then tomorrow is going to be on aspects presenters programs that have to do about that. What can we do to help our senior dogs um, not become injured? If they do become injured, what we can do to help as opposed to just having surgery as an option. So we got a lot of awesome presenters tomorrow, speakers. Uh, it's gonna be another really, really fun day. So now we will open this up to some questions and I'll be directed here. Let's see here. I'm looking at, oh yeah. So here, uh, Zena is saying that she relates, she became a dog advocate and a holistic health care for dogs um, because for dogs and people because of the void in the conventional medical model. So uh, she stepped up to the plate and said, okay, here, here's somewhere where I know I can help and is out there helping other pet parents and people to find those avenues. Yeah. To, to care at lives from other ways. So what are some other questions that we might have? So what we want to do is focus on questions that have to do with the programs from today. All right, so Lisa has some standard poodles, three standard poodles. And um, so she started doing titer testing. And there is some shopping that you'll need to do on this titer testing. 
because there are even, so there are now, used to, we had to send the blood out to laboratories, but now there are tighter tests that can be run in clinic, which is why we have more veterinarians offering it up in the practice. Um, while that should be less expensive because it's available, depending on where you live, um, you know, it's whatever the market will bear. So there are some sites you might also want to check with um, Dr. Will Falconer on his site, Vital Animal. And I'm sure on there, there's some other um, information that you can use to access some options for titer testing. $700 a dog would be exorbitant. I've been doing titer testing since fairly early in the 2000s. And back then, like I said, there wasn't end testing, but they weren't that, that expensive. So uh, let's see here. Okay, so here we have any opinion on specific supplements for central nervous system issues. So not exactly, other than what we talked about today with the CBD, I wouldn't say this topic exactly fits on uh, what we were talking about for the central nervous system. That program is going to come up a little bit later in some of the other topics in the days to come. So stay tuned for that. There certainly are not uh, supplements from the way of being able to use different kinds of herbs for help the nervous system, but also nutrients. And this is one of the topics that we'll go into in detail in the post summit course that I'll be offered and we'll be able to really get uh, in a lot deeper. But uh, degenerative myelopathy is, is one that once it starts, it becomes very challenging and anything that you can do early on is going to help that too, which also not administering extra vaccines, got a bug in here, vaccines that affect the nervous system, like the rabies and the distemper, which go after the nervous system in the real world. Alrighty, let's see here. So this is from Shelly. Thank you, Shelly. She says, I learned so much from your presentation that I watched this afternoon. Thank you so much. Could you tell us your thoughts on feeding a dehydrated raw? I think dehydrated raw is fine. That is one of the ones I recommend for my clients because I would just say, you know, it's the raw with the blood extracted from it. So what I have found though with my dogs and my cats is that none of them really like it soaked. They really like to eat the dehydrated well, I'm talking about when they come in the little chunks, which is a little bit more the freeze dried, but it's a type of dehydrated. So those little chunks, they like to eat just like that. Um, if you have a dehydrated that's in a pellet, uh, a powder, that kind of thing that's loose, then those generally you need to add the water to. But I think they're great. And I've had lots of dogs do very well on those. So thank you, Shelly, for that question. Uh, let's see here. What is another one here? Isaac, are you seeing anything else from your end there that's coming in? Uh, here's a nine-year-old Weimaraner. Uh, looks like you've got some anemia going on. There's all kinds of reasons that anemia can be there. Low red cell count. I'm not sure the alkaline phosphatase, if that was high or low, but uh, you know, looking at the whole body, and there's just so much on a nine-year-old dog that you'd have to start to take a look at. So that's a little bit more than what would be a part of the, the program for today. Anemias can come because the bone marrow isn't putting out the cells. It can come on because they're being destroyed, picked up by the spleen, um, all kinds of differences there. Um, it could be an autoimmune thing, alkaline phosphatase. I just can't say about that. An alkaline phosphatase that's elevated can rise if there's liver problems, gallbladder problems. It can rise if the adrenals are overactive. Alkaline phosphatase can arise, rise, be too high. When the thyroid is underactive, um, it can elevate with certain drugs like NSAIDs and some other drugs can make it elevate. It'll also elevate in the presence of low magnesium. So there's different nutrients that we need to look at when you're looking at those blood parameters. So there's a lot of different reasons to sort through when the alkaline phosphatase enzyme is elevated. So you got to figure out which one it is. And uh, from my perspective, part of what I do in trying to get to the bottom, I'm all about finding the arsonist rather than just putting out fire after fire after fire. It's like, who's the arsonist here? What is the arsonist? 
And so that's where I use the hair mineral analysis. We send a first sample into the laboratory and actually get a readout of the different minerals and the toxic metals. And that, that read of those minerals, not only one that's high or one that's low, but also ratios of certain ones. Just from the hair, you can determine what the pituitary, the thyroid, and the adrenals are doing. You, can, you will be told in this report, it gives information about how that individual deals with carbohydrates, uh, how they are digesting proteins, do they need enzymes or probiotics is on there, how the immune system's functioning. There's a lot of information in a hair analysis. So um, yeah, so I've been doing that since again, the early 2000s, mid 2000s, had research that was published in 2017. We had 564 dogs that me and another researcher working through um, an analytical research labs is the company that I use. And uh, we put all this together and actually got it published. And there's certain trends that again, go back to inflammation. It shows that the majority of the dogs are living in a stressed, inflamed life and the body is constantly dealing with those inflammatory issues. So I took it from that research and then actually wrote the book that uh, directs doctors on how to learn how to interpret the hair analysis test and certainly animal nutritionists and, and the like, anybody who's wanting to learn. So I wrote that book and actually worked to treat more, teach more doctors on how to learn how to do this because I realized my goal is to help as many animals as possible. And just doing what comes into your office or clinic isn't the way to get it done. These summits is one way to share this information with others, all of the summits that have been, you know, it's just such good information. But then writing the book and then teaching other doctors, lecturing at veterinary conferences, but it is the key for being able to do that. So uh, Patricia, you say link for hair test. Mm -hmm. You certainly can go to my website, uh, which is uh, lifeextendmethod.com. And there's information about the hair tissue mineral analysis there. And certainly if you are really super deep in it, you really, really, really want to learn. It's like, it's a cool puzzle. And it's, uh, you put all these different aspects together to figure it out, but it's a lot of fun. It's a nice brain game, how to interpret a hair analysis. All right. What's some other questions we have out there today? here. There you go. Okay, so there's my connection via the pet summits. It was there at the bottom. Uh, let's see here. We've got something else to bring up. Alrighty, let's see, I could uh, touch on a few of the other topics that were part of what we had today and maybe expand a little bit. Oh, I know one that came up. Uh, it was in Dr. Katie's presentation. She was talking about the senior dog and this wasn't mentioned, that bugs back, mentioned in any of the programs, but um, some of you may have a senior dog or had one that has that really gnarly, crusty, old nose. The nose gets very, it's not smooth and shiny. It's thick and it peels in layers. Well, that is an omega-6 fatty acid deficiency. And one of the best sources for omega-6 fatty acids is black currant seed oil. So I have done this time and time and time and time and time again. You can either apply the black currant seed oil and I get mine through standard process, but you can open the capsule and put it on the nose or you can just give it to them orally. And you would be amazed that over the course of a few weeks, how the thickness of that nose starts uh, reducing and the, the health and integrity becomes more normal and some of them get to where they're totally normal. So just a little tip there, those big old thick crusty noses need the omega-6 fatty acids. Alrighty, so let's see here. Okay, so uh, a question here about the nervous system and idiopathic tremors. Okay, so idiopathic means they don't know the answer for it. That means they're there, but they don't exactly know why. And I agree, you don't want to just chalk up the tremors to an old age and go, oh, it happens when it's old. Oh, it's common in Welsh corgis. Well, yeah, that's true. But there is an underlying reason. And again, I go back to, I do the hair analysis. I find out what nutrients are missing 
what is too high, where is the copper, copper, copper wires move electricity. A body that is high in copper is going to be buzzy. It is going to be sending signals fast. You feel like your body is spinning one direction at a speed and your insides are spinning at the other when this copper is super elevated. And there's reasons that copper rises. Copper will rise because the adrenal glands need copper and cholesterol to make cortisol. And cortisol is the bullet. It's the, when the 911 signal goes out, the adrenal glands have to respond. They're a priority gland and they respond to save your life. And they save your life by putting out cortisol. And what do they need for it? Copper and cholesterol. And this is where cholesterol lowering drugs are a real problem because they are being held in the body because the body is constantly sending the 911 signal. You're in stress, you got a very high profile job or you're a stress kind of person, a type A, you're, you're always signaling the adrenals to be working. And over a lifetime that begins to wear on you, and then the, the adrenals in the body, if it has available enough copper, it might just stockpile it. But then that makes you start to spin. So that could lead to tremors. Deficiency in folic acid can be a reason for tremors. We know that folic acid is important for babies to not have um, spina bifida. So that's very, very important. Calcium and magnesium. These are the two most important minerals that are often low on our hair tests. Calcium and magnesium calm the body. Calcium calms the muscles, magnesium calms the nerves. When those minerals are deficient, which in many, they are marginally available. So I'm not talking about what's in the blood because if the blood shifts, then you're down the tube fast, but the body will steal from areas in order to keep the blood balanced because that's what keeps you alive second to second. So if this calcium and magnesium is low and means super low, there will be nerve and muscle problems. You can't sleep good. The body will have jitters, uh, anxiousness, ADD, ADHD. Uh, this is part of that. The When they get older, the pacing, because years of this calcium magnesium being low, it also low calcium is a real problem for the thyroid. So we get the endocrine system super involved. Then if we look at the nerve, the nerves themselves, not only from what I've just said, but now you add in toxins. So toxins, glyphosate, which steals the minerals from the body. Also toxins like um, any, uh, so the insecticides and pesticides, they kill the, the parasite normally or the organism by affecting its nervous system. But when this is applied to your dog, like in the flea and tick products, month after month after month, that, that kills the, that individual's nervous system and destroys it and they die, the bug, then over time it can start to do that to the body that it's been being applied to over and over and over. So, so this is all a part of those nerve tremors. It's toxins in the environment, toxins it's put on them. It's an accumulation. And, and a lot of the bodies get to a point where they just break down and they go, okay, I can't, I can't handle this anymore. And that's the response are the tremors, but you can get to the bottom line of it. We can figure out what is the cause of that. And there are ways that uh, chemicals can then be depleted from the body. And Dr. Um, Odette's going to be having Odette Suter's, the next pet summit coming up is going to be about toxins and about doing things to detox. So that one will be really, really cool too. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's a question about the balance of sixes and threes, but I'm not saying that that's omega-6 fatty acids, what everybody needs, but I can tell you the dogs with them thick, crusty noses, they need the black currant seed oil. Uh, we have another one. Uh, oh, sebaceous cysts, special feeding for dogs. Yeah, the sebaceous cysts. So this is another, the development of those has to do with the endocrine system. It's an imbalance of thyroid. Um, there's so many factors that lead into this. And I, can't say that there's one specific food. You know, I do a lot of Ayurveda. So I'm back to saying, let's find out what the dosha type is in this individual and find out from that what's the best to feed. So that sebaceous cyst and accumulation, that's going to be a kapha state. They're holding on to things that should be released, dispersed, moved across the cell surface. So that would be a too much kapha. So I would look into Ayurveda and that's going to be also one of the programs that we will have in our post summit course. 
and you'll actually there's a quiz that you'll do to find out what percentages of dosha your dog is and then we can work through a diet to help but that's where i would go to is it's like too much kapha so i'd be looking at what do we need to do to get some kapha out of this body uh help with the thyroid things chinese they'll look at stagnation uh that type of thing Alrighty, let's see so this question is, what are some specific ingredients of food supplements that should absolutely be voided from holistic standard? Well, definitely anything that says natural flavorings. Flavorings, just because it says natural, it can be made in a factory that is beef. And because beef is a real thing, that they can say it's, a nat it's natural, but it doesn't, it's not like real beef juice. Uh, MSG can be an, a, a be one of those flavorings that are added. So you definitely don't want to have those. Uh, we're looking at foods carrageen is super bad. Um, we know there have been studies done. Uh, this actually was in England that studies were published about Karen Terriers and transitional cell carcinomas of the bladder and the effect that carrageen was, was the key item that affected that. So that we want to have you, you just want to have real things in their food, not the chemicals, the additives. There's going to be some auger auger. As a, if you feed like a canned food, there's things that hold it together, and some of the kibble will have that. Also, <clears throat> but you don't. Guar gum is not as good as auger auger. So those binders, there's some that are safer than others. I also say too, if you are an individual that does have to feed kibble because of your budget or your lifestyle. Um, really try to avoid the extruded diets and go with the baked kibble. There's 14 different companies that have baked kibble and they're also listed on my website uh, as well. And uh, they'll, um, they're also in the download book that I did for you, uh, Building a Better Body from Mouth to Bum. The, the 14 different baked kibble companies are in there as well. So those would be just some of the things to look for in the food. So what you want is anything that you don't recognize what it is. It's probably, if it looks like a chemical, it is a chemical. If you don't recognize the word, it's probably not so good in the body for long term. Now, granted, if somebody brought by a Oreo cookie, I might eat it, even though I know there's nothing good in there. And if I read the label, I would know there was nothing good in there because I'm sure there's high fructose corn syrup. One now and then, okay, I don't really buy it myself because I wouldn't want to eat the whole bag. So, so, so you don't deprive yourself of everything all the time, but you do have to focus on the best most of the time. Alrighty. Uh, so what else have we got? Do you, so do you have to use medication like vet med for heart disease? B2 level three. So, okay. I'm guessing they're saying that their dog, uh, so your dog has a, a grade three, heart murmur, and then you're looking for other ways you can handle it. Sure, there's a lot of different holistic avenues that can be used for heart disease. So um, in addition to making sure that you have all the nutrients on board that the heart needs, uh, CoQ10 you can add in, which is actually in heart muscle. Uh, you feed heart. So at Chinese, uh, like heals like. So you want to feed heart if there's a heart condition. Uh, you can bump up the CoQ10, taurine is used by the heart. Uh, and we know now with all of the inflammation that's in the dogs, and this has nothing to do with that whole food thing that came out a few years ago on the kibble and the dog foods. Uh, they came up with some answers, but it wasn't the real why. I can tell you the real why is in the 564 dogs that we did the analysis on for the hair. Uh, you, The answer is this chronic inflammation. And this chronic inflammation in the body needs a lot of taurine. And when there's not enough taurine on board to cover everything, certainly the heart is going to be at effect because it's one of the organs that get every time you get stressed, the heart, what does the heart do? So you get stressed, the signal goes to the adrenals, the adrenal says the heart goes faster. So the heart's constantly beating when you're in a stress state and inflammation, the heart's being overworked too. So taurine is one of the things that we add in to help bilberry. Uh, hawthorn is really good for heart. Um, uh, the, the water accumulation, a diuretic, Lasix is commonly used, but uh, there's mullein leaf that I have my clients make a tea with and it works really good. So there are a lot of different ways that you can approach the heart. It just depends on how far into the heart disease they are, whether or not it can actually 
you, you might have to sometime go to a, a, a pharmaceutical compound, but because of the other things you use, I mean, you can even use um, ylang-ylang as an essential oil is very good for arrhythmias and helping to regulate the heart rate. So there are a lot of things out there that you can do. And sometimes you might need, like I was saying, need a prescription, but maybe you don't need it as high of a dose or you don't need as much. So in the right time and scenario, pharmaceuticals certainly are a good thing and we're glad we have them. But there are other options that you can do prior and during. It doesn't have to be one or the other. All righty, so what else have we got here? All right, so which hair test were you suggesting? Um, so here's one, I did five strands, which wasn't helpful. Basically just said my dog and I are both sensitive to everything we eat. Okay, so five strands was a type of a hair test that was using the hair, and sometimes they'll use saliva to find sensitivities, to find allergens. This, this hair test, while just like you can use blood, and do all kinds of tests for blood. You could do a CBC on blood, or you could do a chem panel on blood. You could do a thyroid profile. You could test for Babesia. There's all kinds of different tests that can be run on that sample. And the same way is with the hair. So you can use the hair as a DNA matrix to find that individual, uh, just like you can use cheek swabs and saliva for a lot of different reasons. Um, but there's a specific type of a test that's a mineral test. It's a hair tissue mineral analysis, TMA. So, so it has to be a tissue mineral analysis test on the hair that then breaks down the different mineral levels and the toxic metals, specific tests. And like I said, um, I've been doing those for a long time and, and can certainly help you with that. So those laboratories that do that type of testing, I mean, this philosophy, this study, this science developed in the 50s, 60s, been coming along. And Dr. Paul Leck was really the early doctor that was the founder of creating a laboratory system for for doing these types of tests and so that's the laboratory i use i'd like to somebody who's been doing it a long time they really had to think about it and learn about it and figure it out when there wasn't so many others on board it's where you put yourself on the edge and out there in the way of all the arrows all righty uh wonder side yes uh Okay, well, so so the question is, is that uh, Wonderside is a very good product, though it has a bit of sodium laurel sulfate. It's also in a lot of our shampoo products. Yes, um, and and I do agree, Wonderside can can help a whole lot. So some of these have to have ways to have them delivered, but Wonderside is not something you're going to be using every day all the time. You would use it if you had an injury or a wound but then hopefully the wound would heal if the immune system was good, the skin integrity was well, you really had the arsonist under control and you're not just putting out the fires. So it's not something you're using all the time, even like for your hair, you, you don't want to have that in and be using all the time, but you're going to wash your hair several days a week all the time, all your life. So you want to look for shampoo products that don't have that in there. And uh, I'm looking away because I got a mental block. I'm trying to think of the company. A Tropiclean is one of the shampoo companies actually made in Missouri that uh, I use myself. My son and I have used it. We had it in the clinic and it is so good. And it doesn't have any of the bad stuff. It's a better quality shampoo for the dogs than what many are for people. Yeah, Earth Animals, very good. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, are there natural flea and tick repellents that work? Okay, so you have the right word in there, Rose. Hey, welcome, Rose. I know you and Peanut. Uh, so the word that you have there is repellent, and that's the thing. So the natural products are going to be more of a repellent and not a killer. So you have to use different multiple of them. So one of the things that uh, you can uh, just got that you got the flash up there for the four legger. They have some products there, uh, the shampoos. Uh, they were a sponsor of the most recent pet summit. Um, also, so on this repellent thing, um, doTERRA has a product called Terra Shield that is essential oil that comes in a spray. So repellents are designed, they will help keep them off. They don't necessarily always kill. They're not a killer, but they're a repellent, which if you can keep them from getting on there or slow them down, that if they do attach, they're not very healthy, then all that is good. 
Um, so there's that. There are a lot of different kinds of the medallions that emit frequencies that have been being produced. And I think those have gotten better than what they were a time ago. Uh, geranium is used in some topical applicators. So there's that. Uh, also, Buck Mountain Botanicals has a powder that is very effective that you can use topically. That's also a good repellent and it really if it ticks attach there. They're not as effective at being able to fill themselves up. So again, a lot of these are repellents, but if you do a blend of different ones, then you can get a good effect. Oh, there used to be also a flea and tick spray that was made by Farnham. It was an organic. It had a water base. It was organic and uh, it was made from chrysanthemum flowers. So chrysanthemum is where the natural pyrethrins came from. And then, of course, scientists figured out a way to extract that and then run it through a machine, figure out uh, exactly what the makeup was of the chemical ingredients in those. You know, in the old days, the gardens would always have mums, chrysanthemums, marigolds planted around them, some uh, zinnias. And that was part of keeping the bugs out because of the natural chrysanthemum. Um, natural pyrethrin that was in there. So then we got synthetic pyrethrins and then it went to permethrins, which are very also toxic. So you don't want to be using those all the time on your, your animals, uh, not at all on cats. Uh, permethrins are extremely toxic to cats. So they're going to be toxic to dogs, just not as deathly. But at any rate, so you can find, I'm not sure if Farnham still makes that, but it was a water base, uh, came from Marigold's organic water base pyrethrin spray that was, we had that, uh, we used it on the horses. I used it on myself when I went riding and camping and then had it for dogs as well. And cats, it was safe for those to use too. So if you can find products like that and then you kind of build on those, having more than one, one product. And then also sometimes when you, for these repellents, you wanna apply it right before you're gonna go. So say you did it three days ago and now you're gonna go out hiking again. You gotta, a lot of the repellents you have to do almost every day. So keeping on top of that. And there's some that you can find that don't have the different inert ingredients, but they're going to have to be delivered somehow. So sometimes I just, I use, I can make my own. I'll use witch hazel and then add in different essential oils and spritzer myself, citronella, the geranium, uh, peppermint, a little bit of clove, maybe some cinnamon. Um, you might even use uh, the whatever the, the different companies, there's so many different ones that have essential oils. If you've got one that has a product, you know, and you want to add to that, you can beef it up, do things that way too. All right. So, so I have a question. If I've heard of pet protector, a non-toxic repellent, does this work? You know, when I look at the word pet protector, it looks familiar, but I definitely have not ever used it and I don't really know about it. So I'm not sure if it works or not. I don't know if that's a, um, a medallion or if it's a, something that, uh, if it's a spray on. Uh, diatomaceous earth. So the thing about diatomaceous earth is it is only to be applied to, to the environment or topically. It's not to be taken and ingested. I know there are some that, that think that diatomaceous earth can be used as a binder when you're detoxing, but actually it's not good at all because it makes a paste and then that paste adheres to the intestinal lining and it takes a long time for it to come loose from there. So do not use diatomaceous earth orally, but uh, if in your area, this is the other thing we get into, is that uh, colloquially, in different areas, sometimes the parasites actually build a resistance to certain things. And so what used to work in your area against the fleas and ticks may not work anymore. But if you find that the diatomaceous earth is beneficial and um, you can, this person saying uh, diatomaceous earth with water applied, if you're using it topically and that seems to work for you, then I think that's probably not a problem as long as the animal's not then licking it. You would not want them to lick themselves and then take it in orally. And then it gets to the intestines and it creates this other problem that you have no idea that this is what's causing it. So we really want to avoid that. Alrighty. Well, that was pretty much fun. We are into the parasite season. 
And so that's a part of concern right now is how what to do and how you can can avoid it. And uh, from Dr. Will's perspective, of course, he would say that we want to keep that immune system up. And all of us would heartily agree with that. If you have a stronger immune system, that body is going to repel it. Uh, garlic is another one that can be used. You don't want to use raw garlic, but a little bit of garlic powder or like an essential oil garlic um, that can also be used for helping to keep away uh, the buggers. Uh, let's see here. So Christine says, I use tails only, pest be gone. It has water, clover leaf, sassafras, cinnamon, citronella, eucalyptus, lemongrass, yeah, geranial, tea tree, sage, ginger oils. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I was saying. There's a lot of those different essential oils that you can buy made or you can make them yourself. Uh, and that way you can add a little more or a little less, whatever works best for your, for your dog. Okay, so the pet protector is a disc. Oh, uses magnetic. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, this is one of the things I was saying and puts a shield. This is one of the things I was talking about when I started uh, on this topic about uh, the fact that there's some of these that are coming out that actually seem like they make sense. Uh, uses magnetic and scalar waves, so it creates a protective shield. So I do think that as this is perfect, per perfected, it's going to be helpful. And you know, they have those things that they hang in, in uh, outdoor eatery areas that zap the bugs that they get attracted to. And so we certainly can emit frequencies, which is really when your body is in optimal health, you're operating on waveforms, uh, intensities, and frequencies that combat cancer. Cancer can't grow under that situation. And that's also why you'll see somebody that's like always healthy and then somebody that's sick a lot. Well, their frequency level has come down. It's not vibrating at the level that it needs to for optimal health. And as you digress, then you move into these frequency bands where parasites can harbor, uh, viruses, bacteria, organisms can live better. And as you move back up, then they can't live there so well. So this is a part of keeping the body strong, the immune system up, uh, creating less stress. The happier you are, the more relaxed, the better sleep you get. All of those things. Of course, if you're getting it, your dog's getting it too. Um, it all is a part of that building that vibrant chi, the vibrant uh, prana, the vibrant innate. Yeah, so that those bad things, they don't want to be by you. And that's what we want for our dogs too. So I think, yeah, if anybody else has used the pet protector, any of those kinds or similar discs, then that would be great if you want to give a shout out um, to, to us. Uh, okay, so how would you administer garlic powder? So you could add some of that to their raw diet, to their food, whatever you're feeding them. You could add a little bit of water and just sprinkle it on their food. You'll avoid the problems that come about from having raw. You know, there are garlic capsules, but uh, you can start with doing the garlic powder and use that as a benefit. All righty. See if we got anything else coming in. I think we're getting some really good momentum. And as we go through our next few days, we will be um, venturing in again some more on some of these topics. We're going to take it deeper. We'll be looking at uh, things that you can do. I really wanted this, this summit to be a lot of hands-on, not a lot of expense, but a lot of hands-on, things that you can learn to do that uh, not only the dog would love is beneficial to them in their current state as being older, but also about you, that it helps you to calm down a little bit, to settle, to reduce your stress. And then the two of you together uh, can enjoy that time and, and build some more, um, oh, that, that camaraderie, the bond that you have. So that's, that was a big part, part of the focus. And so as we go through our next few days, we'll hit on some of these other topics. We'll look at things that you can do, ways that you can help support them, uh, not only supporting their 
their old bones and their muscles and their body, but also supporting them emotionally, uh, helping them when they can't hear so good and see so good. We touch on that, uh, really building that better body, and it's never too late to start as uh, Dr. Amy said last night. Oh, one of the things I thought was really cool at our opening party that we had last night, any of you that were there for that, might have seen the trail of comments we had that was uh, focusing on um, the toenail because uh, Dr. Amy had mentioned about the importance of toenails and I think also PJ brought that topic up. Uh, certainly know Laurie deals with that in her PT practice and it's all, uh, it's very, very important to keep those nails down. In fact, in my practice, as long as the dog's not like bad where they scream and flail and pee and poop all over the place, we do toenails for free because it is so important. I don't want somebody to say, I can't afford that because it is so important. So, so toenails are free in my practice and have been for a long time, toenail trims. And so we talked about that a little bit last night. It was fun because uh, of all the different points that came out in the uh, in the in the question box in the comments uh, was really a little conversation thing that got started about toenails and I know a lot of you really work hard to um, keep your dog's nails trim but you can't ever quite get there so the good thing about that is that we have a whole presentation coming up um, in our seminar uh, with our summit that is about toenail trimming so you'll get some other avenues and actually get shown the exact way to cut that nail back so that you're making the most progress. Alrighty, let's see here. Um, so um, Zana is here again. She said also important is to cut her dermal a little at a time. Yeah, and so that's what we're going to talk about. You'll get that in the program. Yeah, and, and being able to cut back that top is what really helps make a difference. So we'll be looking at that. All right. So what we're going to, that's our, that's the end of our questions for now. Thank you all for your input. So we're going to get all ready for tomorrow. And uh, that's going to be our preventing injury and reducing pain. It's our program for tomorrow. I also want to give you a little heads up that a reminder to invite some friends so you can it's not too late they can still join in and you know if they sign up now you you get to watch today's program for 48 hours so if there were any that you missed out on or if your timeline was different and you didn't get up as early as the clock started and you want to catch some later you had to go to work whatever um yeah you can still tune in for 48 hours and watch those and then also after the summit there's going to be a post summit course that i'll be offering there's only 20 people that are in this so we can really do a lot of one-on-one -on -one, and i can get deeper into these conversations that you want because in this master class we will deal with your specific animals issues not just general topics so we'll be able to cover a lot of your pertinent specific questions that deal specifically with your your dog so we've got a lot of fun things ahead in store for that and if you sign up then there's a lot of extra goodies that you get I actually get my biography book story communication uh, conversations with animals um, you get my book on customizing nutrition on how to do that which helps you look at the body systems and then be able to figure out which system based on the survey that you do is most struggling and then which nutrients you want to use to support that system so it helps blend with uh, putting a food program together for them so it's all about customizing and I know this is what part of what we're after is that like we don't want to be treated like everybody else we don't want our dogs to each be treated exactly the same because they're not everybody's an individual DNA is different lifestyles different what's happened is different how the mind thinks about things is different so we need to be able to uniquely treat everybody and this is part of what we do so I thank you all for being here today. I look forward to tomorrow. Uh, after tomorrow's summit, we will have another question and answer. And uh, we'll have some new topics to talk about, some other ones that are dear to my heart. Since I do rehab, this is like super moving into my realm of forte and so much that we can share. So I invite all of you to come with your questions, take your notes, and uh, we'll be ready to roll as they say
All righty. I really appreciate you all being here today and participating in this pet summit, uh, as well as the presenters and our sponsors. So I'd like to do a reach out to our sponsors, um, Revitavet and Dr. Ed with his silent pain program and his um, massage that he trains and teaches. He's got some awesome programs and uh, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. So stay tuned.